Finding God in All Things. Day 16. Who do you say that I am? On the 16th day of the retreat, you might have a question. Why does it seem like we haven't yet touched upon the main topic, which focuses on finding God in all things? In fact, while this theme is important, it is not our ultimate goal. I hope that over the past 15 days, you have realized that the ultimate objective of this retreat is to establish a true and intimate relationship with God through a deep and correct understanding of the God in whom we believe. Any misunderstandings, misconceptions, distorted images, incorrect expectations, as well as our human weaknesses and sinful nature, etc., significantly affect our relationship with God. If the image of God in our minds is distorted, even if we can find God in all things, what we find may not be the image that God wishes to reveal to us, and it will not bring us positive and lasting benefits. So how can we know if the image of God in our minds is authentic? This is indeed a question we need to reflect on, and it is a key factor in whether we can benefit from this retreat. However, since the image with which God desires to relate to us is individual and unique, the experiences of others can only serve as references and cannot be directly applied to our own situation. Therefore, our only and most direct way is to personally approach God, engage in heartfelt communion with Him, and build a relationship with Him, which cannot be achieved solely through book knowledge. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 18 to 20, it is written, Once when Jesus was praying alone, with only the disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Here, Jesus purposely first asked his disciples, Who do the crowds say that I am? And then asked them, But who do you say that I am? Jesus intentionally wanted them to differentiate between the two. Clearly, Jesus does not want them to rely on hearsay or popular opinions, treating others' relationships with him as if they were their own. This is not the individual and intimate relationship that God desires. Just as Jesus not only wants to teach publicly as a teacher, but also desires time and space to interact individually with his disciples. Of course, during his time, Jesus faced limitations of the flesh and the constraints of time and space, making it impossible to establish individual relationships with everyone. However, now, unrestricted by time and space, Jesus desires to build a unique relationship with each of us, lasting until the end of this world. We should take note that, after asking this crucial question, Jesus foretold the suffering, death, and resurrection to his disciples and use different methods to strengthen them. This implies that if the disciples want to follow Jesus completely till the end, with unwavering loyalty, and persist through difficulties and pain, having a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus is absolutely essential. Otherwise, 
when faced with storms or even persecution, especially for the sake of Jesus. An unreal image of God in our hearts and a relationship not rooted in Him cannot help us withstand these challenges. Jesus, who is in the same boat with us, will not be able to rise up to rebuke the wind and the sea and calm the storm for us. Do you feel that your relationship with God is genuinely personal? Or is it an impression you've gained over the years from others talking about God? If Jesus were to ask you now, who do you say that I am? How would you respond to him? you believe that your current relationship with God can withstand trials and challenges? Are there life experiences that can attest to this? Lord Jesus, thank you for allowing me to realize as I revisit and reflect on my relationship with you that the various images of you in my mind are superficial and lack depth as if they have no experiential foundation and lack a genuine connection between us. It makes me wonder 
if these impressions are merely hearsay. Please strengthen me. Don't let me be shaken by this doubt. Guide me to seize this opportunity to clarify the relationship between us with a more earnest attitude, to face you more seriously, and to acknowledge the boundless thoughts and love you have poured into me. Do not let me deviate again from the image you desire to reveal in my heart. Lord, please allow me a little more time to reflect on who you truly are to me. Thank、you